Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials, video 87. It's on Kirchhoff's loop rule, which is a powerful tool to look at circuits. And when combined with Kirchhoff's junction rule, which we'll get to in a few videos, it really makes analysis of complex circuits possible. And so the way it's written is the sum of all the voltages in a loop is equal to zero. And so if we were to write that out, V4, so that'd be the voltage of the battery, minus V1 minus V2 minus V3 is equal to zero. So the sum of all the voltages is equal to zero. Now, how does that work? Well, remember the battery is a voltage lift. It's giving charge potential energy. And then we're losing that energy through this resistor, this resistor, and that resistor. And so the sum of all of the voltage differences is zero. The lift minus the drop minus the drop minus the drop is equal to zero. Now, conceptually, a better way to think of that is like a roller coaster. When you're on a roller coaster, when you start, there's going to be a lift. So that's going to lift you up to the top of the roller coaster. Now the cars have potential energy which is converted into kinetic energy and if, if they play it right you're going to get right back to the beginning again with no energy left. And so Kirchhoff's loop rule is really just the conservation of energy in a loop or in a simple circuit. So the voltage or potential difference around that whole loop is going to be equal to zero. So we could look at for example a battery and a resistor in a simple loop the voltage lift plus the voltage drop is going to sum to zero. Now how do you figure out the voltage of a resistor? Remember we simply use Ohm's law. And that's all you have to know about Kirchhoff's loop rule in physics one. In physics two we're going to add capacitors and then also parallel circuits to it. And so if we think back to that roller coaster as we store energy in this sphere it's just like storing energy in the charge across a battery and when we let it go we can lose some of that energy we could gain some back we could have another battery we could lose some gain some lose some and so you can have a really complex circuit and we can solve it using Kirchhoff's loop rule so think of it more like this so we've got a battery which is like the lift in a circuit it's giving those charge energy or potential energy or, or potential difference and then they're losing that energy they come back to the battery again and they're gaining charge this is a pretty simple model charge is going to be distributed through this whole thing but it's a good way to think of what voltage is and that's why we can't just measure the voltage through something it has to be across something for example across a battery or across a light bulb and so voltage is equal to the work done by the charge as they move and so if we were to move for example one coulomb of charge we could do one joule of work. That's what a volt is. And so let's make that usable. Let's not just short out our battery. If we put a light bulb here, as that charge moves through it, if it's a 1.5 volt battery, we're going to be able to generate 1.5 joules of heat and light coming out of that light bulb. And so if we look at a circuit like this, Kirchhoff's loop rule lots of time is written like this. The summation of the voltages is equal to zero. So the first thing you have to figure out is which way is the current flowing and then just basically current we'll say is flowing from the positive to the negative. So you can think about going through this loop in a clockwise fashion. To use Kirchhoff's loop rule you have to start at some point and be able to return to that same point by tracing out the circuit. And so we're going to say the sum of our voltages is equal to zero. So we'd write it out like this. We're going to start with a battery. The battery, since it's a lift, we're going to give that a positive value. So positive V1 minus V2 minus V3, because we're losing that potential difference in each of these resistors here, is equal to zero. And so we could solve for V1. V1 is equal to V2 plus V3. So let's do a simple problem. Let's say we have a 9 volt battery. We have a 10 ohm and a 5 ohm resistor right here. And then we've got a current going in that direction like that. So first thing we have to figure out is, well, what's the current going to be in this circuit? So we've learned earlier that we could just add these two resistances together. So that's going to be a 15 ohm resistance on this series circuit. So we're going to put 15 ohms right here. What's our voltage? That's given as 9 volts. And so we could solve for the current. It's going to be 0.6 amps. So now we just go around and we can use Kirchhoff's loop rule. So if we look at this resistor right here, what's its voltage going to be? Well, we just use Ohm's law again. We know the resistance is 10. We know that the current is 0.6, and so it's going to have a voltage of 6 volts. What's the other one going to be? It's going to be 3 volts. And so you can see that the addition of this 9 volts minus 6 volts minus 3 volts is equal to 0. And so to think about that, and this model really works for me, think of that same circuit 
drawn like a roller coaster. So we could say the battery is right here. And so how much potential difference do we have or potential do we have at the beginning? Zero volts, but we're lifting it to nine volts as we go through the battery. We're giving it potential energy. That, that charge has potential energy. As it moves through the wire, that nine volts is not gonna change throughout here until we get our next resistor. And so this is a 10 ohm resistor. If it starts at nine volts, what's it gonna be as it gets to the bottom of that? It's gonna be three volts. So we're gonna have a, a voltage drop of six volts and then that goes to three volts and back down to zero volts on this on the second resistor that's going to be inside now if we do a simulation of that this is a PHET simulation I've got that same circuit drawn so it's going to be nine volt potential difference across it we could look at the amps and that's going to be 0.6 amps again we just added those resistance and it's going to be the same you know current through every part of that circuit and then the next thing we can do is just verify that those voltage are, are correct. So if we look across the first one, it's going to be six volts across that first resistor. And then if we were to look across the second resistor, using our voltmeter again, we have to check it across that element. It's going to be three volts right here. But what would happen if we now make it a parallel circuit? So if we're going to build a parallel circuit on the other side, and let's just put a 10 ohm resistor over there. So if you think back to that roller coaster analogy again, what's going to happen as we move through that other circuit, well, we had potential energy right here. We have nine volts of potential energy here. We're gonna have zero volts of potential energy when we get back to here. And so what's gonna be the voltage drop across that? It better be nine voltage drop, nine volts of voltage potential difference, and it's gonna be a 0.9 amps. And so we could check that using our uh, ammeter and then using our voltmeter. So we get a nine voltage drop across there. Now, as you move into physics two, you have to understand what's going on with not only resistors, but capacitors. And capacitors, remember, will store charge along plates. And so now we've got a simple um, circuit. I've drawn the electrons moving in the circuit or in this time. And so we've got a 0.9 amps. So we've got movement right there. If we were to move across this one resistor, the voltage drop is going to be nine volts. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a capacitor. So we're gonna put the split the junction right here and we're gonna put a capacitor right here. And watch what happens to the charge. The charge eventually stops. And so let me discharge that capacitor. And so it stops. And so we could even look at what's happening to the current. You can see the current is dropping to zero. So there is no flow. But now let's, throughout the whole circuit, there's no flow. But now let's start to look at the voltage. And so with the resistors, we would expect across this one to be that whole nine voltage, but it's not, it's zero volts. And so where's the potential difference? It's going to be across the capacitor itself. And so when you're using Kirchhoff's loop rule with capacitors, you can think of a capacitor just like a battery. That's where the voltage is going to be. Now let's put two capacitors that are gonna be in series. And so if we look at the voltage across each of those, since they're the same capacitance, it's gonna be 4.5 volts on each one. But if we change the capacitance of that next capacitor, so let's give this higher capacitance, so it's a larger capacitance, I moved it up to 0 0.20 farads. So now we find the voltage on the bottom part is three volts on the bottom capacitor, on the top one it's gonna be six volts. So that's that inverse relationship when we're looking at capacitors. And that's because we're storing that charge along that plane. And so did you learn to construct or interpret a graph of energy changes? Again, think of it like a roller coaster. Could you apply the conservation of energy that shows how the, Kirk, the Kirchhoff's loop rule works? And so again, it's the voltage lift is equal to the sum of all the voltage drops. Could you apply this to solve a simple problem? Could you then start to study capacitors? And we call those steady state circuits. What does steady state mean? Well, when you just hook it up, it's going to be transient. So we see a little bit of charge still moving, but eventually it becomes a steady state. And so understanding how a capacitor works inside a circuit like that. And then could you tie this to the potential energy, the ability of that charge to do work? I hope so. And I hope that was helpful.